All right, this is Geometry, Chapter 14, Lesson 3. Guys, I'm on page 585, and really, go back, go to 586. All right, so this is, we talked about the perimeter in Lesson 2. And today, we're going to talk about the area, area of a um, regular polygon. All right, so if I'm talking about the area of a circle, what is the area, formula for the area of a circle? Okay, perimeter is how many dimensions? Let's remind ourselves. Perimeter is how many dimensions? One. There's only one dimension. You're literally measuring that one dimension, okay? So in terms of dimensions, perimeter is one. Area is how many dimensions? It's two. If we're talking about a rectangle, it's the length times width. Always when you have uh, two dimensions that you're measuring, you will always have a variable that is squared. Like for a rectangle, it would be length times width. That actually is a second degree term. Because you add, to decide, to determine the degree of a term, you add their exponents. Constants, numbers have an exponent of zero when you're, when you're determining the degree. All right, got it? So you're always going to have a second degree term in um, your equation when we're in two dimensions. And area is two dimensions. All right, so what's the area of a circle? Area is, this is not new. Come on, y'all know the formula for area of a circle? Pi r squared. Pi is actually a value, right? Pi is like a constant. It's, it's um, an irrational constant, but it is a constant nonetheless. And R is squared. R is the radius, all right? For a regular polygon, it's going to look very similar. It's going to be M R squared. I call it Mr. Squared, even though Mr. is not squared. <clears throat> all right, so where N stands for the number of sides times the sine of 180 over N, M is going to stand for the number of sides times the sine of 180 over the number of sides times um, the cosine of 180 over n. This is going to represent half of a side, and this is going to represent the length, the length of the apothem. All right, we're gonna prove that in just a minute. All right, so let's say that I have a pentagon. And let's say the length of the side is 10. You could already tell me the perimeter, right? Can you tell me the perimeter? What would the perimeter be? Of this pentagon. How many sides does it have? Five. It's a regular pentagon. So how would I calculate the perimeter? 50. It's five times 10. Okay, so don't neglect the obvious. 
I cannot tell you how many times I put that on a test and students can't answer it. Because they want to go to NR. But if I give you the length of a side, just multiply it by how many sides there are. Got it? All right. So now, if I drew a radius and I drew an apothem, then from the apothem to the vertex is going to be five, right? If I calculate the area of that one triangle, then I could multiply it by two to get the area of this whole triangle. You following me? And then I can multiply it by five to get the area of all the triangles inside. Does that make sense? All right. So I can know this angle because that apothem divides that central angle into two parts. All right, so first of all, let's calculate this whole angle and that's gonna be half of it. All right, so what would that whole angle be up here? How would I get this one? We just went over that in the quick review. How would I get that angle? Yes? Three sixty all the way around. Three sixty by five. And then how would I get this one? I'd multiply that by, I'd take half of this. Okay, I just wanna show you something, half, all right? So this is the number of sides, right? Right? But we take half of it because we're only looking at this angle. Well, can I simplify before I multiply? Yes, I can. The two simplifies to one, and this simplifies to 180, so that I end up with 180 over five. <clears throat> I don't wanna tie that into the formula. That's why we use 180 in this formula, as opposed to 360, because we're just talking about this right here. Got it? That's why it's 180 because that's the same thing as 360 divided by the number of sides and taking half of it. Got it? You with me? Okay, what is that? 180 divided by, that's 36, <clears throat> 36 degrees. Everybody agree with me? 36 degrees. That's this angle right here. 36 degrees, so that length would be five as well. <clears throat> All right, now I could find the length of the apothem. Couldn't I? using trig. So how would I find the length of the apothem using trig? Actually, let's find the radius first. Let's find the length of the radius. All right, so the radius, and then we'll find the apothem. <clears throat> All right, how would I find the length of a radius? Using trig, what trig ratio would I use? <clears throat> 
what's, okay, I have the 36 degree angle. What sides do I have in relation to that? I have the opposite, opposite and I'm looking for the, the, the hypotenuse. So I'm opposite and the hypotenuse, so which one am I using? Sine. Sine. So it'd be the sine of 36 degrees equals the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is the radius. All right, what do I do from here? I swap my extremes so that R equals five over the sine of 36 degrees. <clears throat> All right, someone do that in their calculators for me. Let's get the length of a radius. <clears throat> <clears throat> What's the radius? Who has it? You have it? What is it? 3.5. Give me uh, three more decimal places. 3.5065. Anyone agree? Mm -hmm. Everyone agree? All right. Now, let's solve for the apothem. Now that's this leg. What trick ratio do I want to use? Come on, what's your ratio? For the 36, I have the opposite and the apothem is the, what side? Come on, tan, it's the adjacent. All right, so the tan of 36 degrees equals the opposite over the adjacent. Again, I swap my extremes. The apothem is going to be 5 divided by the tan of 36 degrees. Somebody give me that measure. And what is it? 6.8819. Does anybody else agree? <clears throat> okay. Now let's just find the area of one of these triangles. Do you see which triangle we're solving for? This triangle right here. The one in red. Once I find the area of that, I can multiply it by five times two. First we'll multiply it by two, right? Because that's a whole one. And then we'll multiply it by five. All right, so the area of that small triangle is one half base, which is five, times height, which is the apothem, 6.8819. Somebody do that in your calculator. I didn't do these calculations. <clears throat> All right, what is that? Seven. All right, now multiply it by two, then again by five. 74.4095. Uh huh, and then by five. Did you also multiply it by five? It would be 170.4095.
172.0475, is that yes. correct? Okay, so that would be the area. <clears throat> now, let's compare it to if we use Mr. Squared. And then we're gonna look at Mr. Squared and how we get here. All right, so Mr. Squared would be the number of sides, five, times the sine of 180 over five, <clears throat> times the cosine of 180 over five times the radius squared. We said the radius is this, 8.5065. And we're gonna square it, 8.5065 squared. All right, do that in your calculators. If we did our math correctly, 150 divided by 180 divided by 36. All right, what'd you get? You have to close your brackets here or else you're going to get an error. Right here, you have to close your bracket. Close bracket. What do you get? <clears throat> Luke, when you get there, tell me what you get. Mm-hmm. Yes. <clears throat> this is probably wrong, but what if one seventy two point Look. You're right. So it's point two two. Right? I got point oh four seven four. You round it. At some point you round it. I didn't round, I did the whole thing in one fell swoop. One calculation. All right, so you get the same answer, don't you? Okay, now let's decide, let's figure out why. All right. So now we're gonna go back and we're gonna label, let me erase this. I'll draw another regular pentagon. We know it works. All right, I'm gonna draw another regular pentagon. That's gonna be my radius. That's the apothem. We know that that's 36 degrees, because we just did it, right? This represents half the length of a side. You agree? All right. So, this piece of it, we're going to look at how we get this piece, what, what this piece gives us. All right, so it's N, which is just 5, right? What does the sine of 36 give me? The sine of 36 degrees, and then that would be the cosine of 36 degrees. And then it would be times the radius squared, right? All right, so it'd be five times. What does the sine give me? It gives me the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? Well, what is the opposite? It's half a side, right? So it'd be half a side over what? What's the hypotenuse? The radius, right? All right, that's what that would give me. The cosine of 36 would give me what? Adjacent over hypotenuse, right? And the adjacent would be the apothem <clears throat> and the hypotenuse would be the radius times the radius squared.
All right. <clears throat> so what do we get here? What happens to the radius? They cancel out. Well, if I started multiplying, I can multiply, that would be five halves times the side times the apothem divided by the radius squared times the radius squared. See, my radius squared I'm going to leave this five times a half. Do you see how my radius eliminates? So it'll be five, which represents how many triangles, big triangles we have, right? Times one half times the length of a side times the apothem. What, what is this here? What's one half times the length of the side times the apothem? That's the area of one of these triangles, right? And when I multiply it by five, that's how many triangles I have in the whole. So do you see how this really is the same thing as what we did? You can find the area of one of the triangles, multiply it by how many there are in the polygon, or you can use Mr. Squared. Now, let's suppose that instead of a pentagon, that I now have a hundred sided, I have a hundred gone. That's what they would call it. Well, how many sides do you want this? regular polygon to have. You choose. I chose 100. You don't have to choose 100. Just choose a big number. Go. 94. 94. Okay. So we have a 94 gone regular polygon. Let's calculate the area of that 94 gone using Mr. Squared. Okay. I just want to look at the M because we don't know what the radius is. I just want to look at the value of M. We'll just leave R as R. This is such a nice marker. All right, so M represents M, N, rather the number of sides, times the sine of 180 over the number of sides, times the cosine of 180 over the number of sides. All right, so we're going to say it's a 94 gone. So we're going to do 94 times the sine of 180 divided by 94 times the cosine of 180 divided by 94. And we'll just leave radius squared. All right, y'all calculate what that value would be. Remembering you have to close your parentheses. And what do you get? What's this value? What'd you get? One, two, three, two. What's that value close to? Pi, right? All right, can you go in and just change it to 194 sides? Just go back up and change that 94 to 194? And let's see what number you get for 194. <clears throat> One what? Zero. Zero. Okay, here's the value of pi. 
well, to several decimal places. Okay, can you change it to 10,194? Let's see what we get. Let's see if we get close to this value of pi. All right, when it's 10,194, what do you get? 3.1415. Keep going. 92451. <laughs> Look, that's the exact same number right there. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. So really, we're just using trig to find this formula simply uses trigonometry to find the area of one triangle, then it multiplies it by how many there are in a regular polygon. Make sense? That's the same way with 2NR, the perimeter. It finds the length of a side. This value finds the length of a side and then multiplies it by how many sides there are. That's where the N comes in. All right, so what do you have to memorize? 2NR, N is number of sides times the sine of 180 over N. M is the same thing as N, but I'm also multiplying it by the cosine of 180 over N. Got it? 